Warren Buffett is considered one of the greatest investors of all time, amassing a net worth of over $100 billion. Today, I'm going to explain how Buffett uses discounted cash flow to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock. This is the second video in a series where I analyze different methods of calculating intrinsic value. In the first video, I explained the technique of Ben Graham, who was actually Warren Buffett's mentor. So that's definitely worth watching to build some foundational ideas. Now, let's roll the intro. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. So what is discounted cash flow? It's a method used to calculate the value of an investment based on its expected future cash flows. The main idea here is that you're projecting out the future cash flows of the business, then applying a discount rate, giving you the present value of those future earnings. Let's listen to Warren Buffett explain this concept. It's how do you find intrinsic value in a company? Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a, a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of business is. In other words, the only reason for making an investment and laying out money now is to get more money later on, right? That's, that's what investing is all about. Now, when you look at a stock, when you look at a bond, so it means the United States government bonds, very easy to tell how much you're going to get back. It says it right on the bond. It says when you get the interest payments. It says when you get the principal. So it's very easy to figure out the value of a bond. It can change tomorrow if interest rates change. But you are, the cash flows are printed on the bond. The cash flows aren't printed on a stock certificate. That's the job of the analyst is to print out change that stock certificate, which represents an interest in the business, and change that into a bond and say, this is what I think it's going to pay out in the future. If you buy Coca-Cola today, the company is selling for about 110 to $15 billion in the market. The question is, if you had 110 or $15 billion, you wouldn't be listening to me, but uh, I'd be listening to you, incidentally. Uh, but the question is, would you lay it out today to get what the Coca-Cola company is going to deliver to you over the next two or 300 years. The discount rate doesn't make much difference after, uh, as you get further out. But, and that is a question of how much cash they're gonna give you. It isn't a question of, you know, it isn't a question of how many analysts are gonna recommend it or what the volume in the stock is or what the chart looks like or anything. It's a question of how much cash it's gonna give you. That's the only reason, it's a true way, if you're buying a farm, it's true if you're buying an apartment house, any financial asset, oil in the ground, you're laying out cash now to get more cash back later on. And the question is, is how much are you going to get? When are you going to get it? And how sure are you? Berkshire selling for, we'll say, 105 or so billion now. Uh, what can we distribute from that 100? If you're going to buy the whole company for 105 billion now, can we distribute enough cash to you soon enough to make it sensible at present interest rates? to lay out that cash now, and that's, that's what it gets down to. And if, the, if you can't answer that question, you can't buy the stock. You, know, you, can, you can gamble in the stock if you want to, or your neighbors can buy it. But if you don't answer that question, and I, I can't answer that for, for internet companies, for example. There are a lot of companies, there are all kinds of companies I can't answer it for, but I just stay away from those. Number two. So you got formulas involved in finding intrinsic values on certain companies. I mean, you've got a mathematical system it's set up. Just kind of present value of future cash, yeah. Okay. I, I, I use what I've just been talking about, I use the illustration of Aesop. Because here Aesop was in 600 BC. Smart man, wasn't smart enough to know it was 600 BC though, I mean, <laughs> would take a little foresight. Uh, but Aesop, you know, in between tortoises and hares and all these other things, he found time to write about, you know, birds. And he said, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now that isn't quite complete, because the question is, how sure are you that there are two in the bush? And how long do you have to wait to get them out? Now, he probably knew that, but he just didn't have time because he had all these other 
proverb is to write uh, and had to get on with it. So, but he was halfway there in 600 BC. That's all there is to investing is how many birds are in the bush, when are you going to get them out, and how sure are you? Now, if interest rates are 15%, roughly, you've got to get two birds out of the bush in five years to equal the bird in the hand. But if interest rates are 3% and you can get two birds out in 20 years, it still makes sense to give up the bird in the hand because it all gets back to discounting against an interest, uh, an interest rate. The uh, problem is often you don't know, you know, not only how many birds are in the bush, but in the case of the internet companies, there weren't any birds in the bush. But, uh, uh. Let's summarize Buffett's major points. Intrinsic value is the summation of all future cash flows in a business discounted back at a discount rate. We'll explain this idea of a discount rate later in the video. The main idea of investing is that you will lay out cash now to get more cash back in the future. This is the fundamental concept of investing in any financial asset. The main questions you think about are how much future cash will it produce, when will you get it, and how sure are you? So how do we actually calculate discounted cash flow? I built out this handy little calculator to help understand. The main inputs are free cash flow per share, the reasonable annual growth rate of free cash flow, the total number of years simulated and the discount rate. Let's explain these in more detail. Free cash flow is the cash that a company generates from its business operations after subtracting capital expenditures. It represents the cash flow that is available to all investors before cash is paid out to make debt payments, dividends, or share repurchases. This is preferable to operating cash flow because capital expenditures can often be a recurring cost in a business. Also, many investors prefer free cash flow per share over earnings per share because it's harder to manipulate and often provides a better view into the business. Free cash flow is the metric that Buffett tends to look at and is represented in the equation by FCF. Then you have G, which is the reasonable annual growth rate of free cash flow. Reasonable is the key word here. It's important to be conservative with projections and only choose numbers which you can pick with a high degree of certainty. N is the total number of years to simulate in the model. For a business, the number of years is theoretically forever or until the business no longer operates. Keep in mind that it becomes harder to predict over long periods of time because of so many unknowns. However, discounted cash flow is also used to value many different kinds of investments, not just businesses. In those cases, the number of years you project out can often be far more defined. The variable K represents the discount rate, which allows you to calculate the present value of those future earnings. Depending on who you ask, you may get a different answer on what to set this as. Buffett and Munger suggest using the U.S. Treasury bond as the base rate. Ben Graham suggested using the AAA corporate bond yield. Many modern investors use things like the weighted average cost of capital or average return of the S&P 500. Buffett and Munger think there are problems with the latter two options, but we'll discuss that later. The main idea here is that the discount rate represents the opportunity cost of investing. The U.S. Treasury bond is the risk-free return you could earn on your money, making that the base rate to beat. Obviously, you wouldn't want to invest in something that is likely to have a lower return than the so-called guaranteed return of U.S. Treasuries. This method takes into account interest rate changes, which are a gigantic contributing factor to stock values. A change in interest rates will impact bond yields, thus changing the opportunity cost of investing in stocks. Let's listen to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger discuss discount rates. We don't formally have discount rates. I mean, every time I start talking about all this stuff, Charlie reminds me that I've never prepared a spreadsheet, but I do, you know, in in effect, in my mind, I do. But uh, we are going to want to get a significantly higher return, obviously, in terms of cash produced relative to the amount we're outlaying now for a business than we are from a government bond. I mean, we, you know, we're going to, we, that, that has to be the yardstick at a base. Then how much more do we want? Well, if government bond rates were 2%, we're not going to buy a business to earn three or three and a half percent expectancy over the years. We just don't want to commit our money that way. We'd rather sit around and wait a little while. Uh, if they're four and three quarters percent, you know, what do we hope to get over time? Well, we want to get a fair amount more than that, but I can't, I can't tell you that we sit down every morning and 
And I call Charlie in Los Angeles and say, what's our hurdle rate today? I mean, we have never used the term. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a little bit of the, the, we want enough so that we feel very comfortable if they cl close on the stock market for a couple of years, if interest rates go up another 100 basis points or 200 basis points, we're still happy with what we've bought. And above that, I really, you know, I know it sounds kind of fuzzy, but it is fuzzy. I think in the last analysis, everything we do comes back to opportunity cost. But to some extent, in fact, to some considerable extent, we are guessing at our future opportunity cost. Warren is basically saying that he's guessing that it's in due course to, to uh, put out money at pretty attractive rates of return, and therefore he's not going to waste a lot of firepower now at lower returns. But that's an opportunity cost calculation. And if interest rates were to more or less permanently settle at 1% or something like that, and Warren were to reappraise his notions of future opportunity cost, he would change the numbers. Like Keynes said, what do you do when you change your view of the facts? Uh, well, you change your conduct. Like Buffett said, it's a bit fuzzy. As Munger said, they're guessing. The main idea is that they know they want to earn a significant amount more than the risk-free rate of government bonds, but they are unsure of future changes in that rate. So the discount rate is an area where they like to have a strong margin of safety. So why do Buffett and Munger disagree with using weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate? Well, it takes in variables they view as irrelevant to valuing a business. For example, the capital asset pricing model formula uses the volatility of stock price and historical return of the stock market in its calculation. Buffett explains why this is a mistake here. If you have the capital, you think you can create more than a dollar, how do you create the most with the least risk? And that gets to business risk. It doesn't get to any calculation of the volatility. I don't know the, the risk in C's candy as measured by its stock volatility because the stock hasn't been outstanding since 1972. Does that mean I can't determine how risky a business C's is because we don't have a daily quote on it? No, I can determine it by looking at the business and the competitive environment in which it operates and so on. I have listened to cost of capital discussions at all kinds of corporate board meetings and everything else, and, and you know, I've, I've never found anything that made very much sense in it, except for the fact that, that uh, it's what they learned in business school, and that's what the consultants talked about, and, and, and most of the board members would nod their head without knowing what the hell was going on. At, uh, and that's been the, my history with the cost of capital. His seize candy example is perfect here. You look to the characteristics of the actual business to determine risk, not things like volatility of stock price. Here you can see the general formula for discounted cash flow. The present value is equal to the summation of future cash flows, each discounted by the proper discount rate. You have the first chunk of free cash flow, then the second, all the way up to the nth year. To perform the calculation in this calculator, I use the summation shown here. The free cash flow per share is multiplied each year with the given growth rate. The exponential is needed for the growth rate and discount rate calculation because both of them compound over time. This is equivalent logic of the formula shown here, but allows for the input of the growth rate and actual summation calculation. All right, now that we understand the concept of discounted cash flow, let's actually do an example like Walgreens Boots Alliance. I've actually been buying that stock recently. I did a stock review video and you should check that out for more info. The current price is $47.55. The free cash flow per share is $5.76 based on the trailing 12 months. I will put the growth rate at 2%, which is leaning on the conservative side. We'll have the number of years set as 100. I've seen this as the default in other calculators, but you'll soon see it doesn't make as big of a difference as you'd think. Finally, we have the discount rate. The current U.S. 10-year Treasury yield is 1.26%. Over the last 10 years, it's mainly hovered between 1.5% and 3%. However, historically, it's been much higher. Remember what Buffett said, you want your discount rate to be significantly above this risk-free rate. I'm going to be very conservative for this environment and set my discount rate at 10%. So we hit calculate and it shows a present value of $73.40, which means the stock is trading at a price 35.22% below so-called intrinsic value. Let's change some of the variables and see how that alters the output. If we have a growth rate of 3%, then the present value is now 
$2.64. At 4%, it's $99.47. Let's put the growth rate back at 2% and change the number of years. When changed to 50 years, the present value is $71.76. At 25 years, it's $62.32. Let's put it back at 100 years and now change the discount rate. At 7%, the present value is $116.52. At 5%, the present value is $185.05. The discounted cash flow projection is not an exact science. The reason is that you are not all knowing about the future. You don't know the exact future earnings for a company or the opportunity cost environment. That's why Warren Buffett suggests staying in your circle of competence and only investing in things you can determine with a high degree of certainty. Also, you need to invest with a large margin of safety to protect against errors in calculation. This includes leaning on the conservative side of your inputs. Remember, this is just a model, so garbage in equals garbage out. Business valuation is more of an art than a science. Let's listen to Warren Buffett explain this about discounted cash flow. Well, that's, that's a, a very good question, and it's, it's, I mean, it's the heart of investing or buying businesses, which we regard as the same thing. But... And it is the framework in which we operate. I mean, we are trying to look at businesses in terms of what kind of cash can they produce if we're buying all of them, or will they produce if we're buying part of them, and there's a difference. Uh, and then at what discount rate do we do we bring it back? And, and then I think your question was how far out do we look and all that. Despite the fact that we can define that in, in a very kind of simple and direct equation, you know, we are, we, we've never actually sat down and, and, and written out a set of numbers that uh, to relate that equation. We do it in our heads in a way, uh, obviously. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. But uh, there's no piece of paper, uh, and, and, and we never, there never was a piece of paper that shows what our calculation on Hellsbergs or Seas Candy or the Buffalo News was in that respect. Uh, so it would be attaching a little more scientific uh, quality to our analysis than there really is if I gave you some gobbledygook about, well, we do it for 18 years and stick a terminal value on and do all of this. Uh, we are sitting at the, in the office thinking about that question with each business or each investment, and we, we have discount rates in, in a general way in mind, but uh, we really like the decision to be obvious enough to us that it doesn't require making a detailed calculation. And, and uh, uh, it's the framework, but it's not applied in the sense that we actually fill in all the variables. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the second video in a series where I'll go through different methods of calculating intrinsic value. Next, I have planned to do the dividend discount model. Also, if you've been watching this whole video and wondering what website it is I'm using, this is something I've been building myself. Once it's ready, I will be releasing it to the public, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates on my buys and dividends coming in. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Dividend Data. You can support the channel over on Patreon, where you can gain access to a community Discord server. The link is in the description. Please leave a comment below, and thank you for watching.